The physical Turing test is a benchmark for AI proposed by Jim Fan, NVIDIA's director of robotics. While the traditional Turing test from 1950 measures if an AI can mimic human conversation via text, the physical Turing test measures if an AI can mimic human action in the real world. According to Jim Fan, Tesla for Self-Driving version 14 is the first AI to pass this test because its driving is now indistinguishable from that of a human. So what's the core concept here? Well, the test is passed when a human observer or someone experiencing the AI's work cannot tell if a human or a machine was responsible for the physical test. In conversation, if you chat with a bot and think it's an actual human being, it passes the Turing test. In robotics, if you come to, well, you come home to a clean house and cook dinner and you can't tell if a person or a robot did it, it passes the physical Turing test. Does that make me a robot? I don't know. Anyway, in driving, Jim Fan stated that after riding with full self-driving version 14, you couldn't tell if a neural net or a human drove you home. So why does this even matter? Why is this the holy grail for robotics? Well, Jim Fan explains that passing the test requires embodied AI to solve four massive challenges. And these are, well, okay. Number one, spatial reasoning. Understanding exactly where objects are in a 3D environment. Number two, delicate manipulation. Handling physical objects with the right amount of force, e.g. not crushing a wine glass while cleaning it. It's got to be quite delicate. Real world context, point three. Knowing the difference between a spill that needs a mop and a piece of paper that should actually stay on the desk. Four, the physical API. Moving from code to atoms. Fan envisions a future where make dinner is as simple as an instruction for a robot as print document is for a computer. So Jim Fan is saying that Tesla's full self-driving version 14 is, well, apparently he believes that it has successfully moved from heuristics as in hand-coded rules like if red light, then stop, to end-to-end -end neural networks, which is a completely different level. Because the car learned by watching billions of hours of human video, it now mimics human-like nuances such as creeping at intersections, smooth lane changes, and natural braking, and kind of understanding things that humans do that robots don't. Now, this is what hand-coded software simply cannot actually replicate. First, it feels surreal. Next, it becomes routine. Then, like the smartphone, Taking it away actively hurts, said Jim. If you'd like to book a paid consultation, uh, you can do so. And I'll put a link in the description below. If you want advice on what electric car to buy, solar systems, all that kind of stuff, you can. About an hour ago, I saw a friend of mine post a trip, full self-driving. He posted it on YouTube and he showed Tesla, his Tesla, it's a Tesla Model Y, the hardware four version. So it's a, a new version has come. He bought it within the last four months. He showed it driving through a hailstorm, a proper storm where, I mean, you can really, really, you struggle to see the cars in front of you. It's really challenging visibility. He said he drove through that, that hailstorm and that serious storm where cars in front of you are throwing up spray everywhere and, and you know it's, it's quite stressful driving a storm like that. he said he drove with full self-driving on you can see it in the video through this kind of weather and he drove for seven hours all on full self-driving without any interventions hello my friends welcome to the channel i'm sam evans you're watching the electric Viking. And um, you know what? Tesla's full self-driving fleet is nearing 7 billion total miles, including 2.5 billion city miles. It's easy to forget the fact that this is uh, data that Tesla gets from its customers for free. So as a Tesla owner, you pay for this service, full self-driving, and Tesla is able to use that data to improve its product, which honestly, does make sense, but at the same time, it does sound a little odd to people who haven't gone through this experience, right? 
As you can see on Tesla's official full self-driving webpage, vehicles equipped with the system have now navigated 6.99 billion miles. So let's just say 7 billion miles, more than 10 billion kilometers. Tesla's full self-driving fleet is closing in on 7 billion total miles driven as per data posted by the company on its official full self-driving webpage. And this is data they use, not all of it, but a lot of it, to train their neural nets. The neural net is sort of like a child. You know, when it first is born, it's completely helpless and useless, just can't do anything. And as it gets older and older, it becomes better. These figures hint at the massive scale of data fueling Tesla's rapid full self-driving improvements, which have been pretty impressive lately. Tesla owner and avid full self-driving tester Holmars catalog, I often watch his videos on YouTube, shared a screenshot indicating that more than nearly, well, yeah, the, the fleet's done 7 billion kilometers, which is interesting because more than 2.5 billion of those miles were driven inside cities. Kind of shows you the, um, the numbers here. Around 40% of the miles were driven in cities and the rest of them were on highways. City miles are really valuable though for complex urban scenarios like unprotected turns, pedestrian interactions and traffic lights. Much, much harder to get full self-driving to work, yeah, for cities. Highways are much simpler. This is the difference maker for full self-driving as only complex solutions such as Waymo self-driving taxis operate similarly on inner city streets. Even then though, incidents such as the San Francisco blackouts have proven challenging for sensor-rich vehicles like Waymo. So it's true that Tesla's full self-driving is not perfect yet, but it's also true that Waymo's isn't either. And the difference is here that Waymo's cost of operations are much higher. Think about it, guys. They're building these robo-taxis that cost them about $200,000 each. Now, I'm going to guess that the Tesla's cost for, say, one of their new cyber taxis might be $20,000 US dollars. I mean, if they've just used a Model 3, their cost might be $25,000 US dollars. That's a fraction of the price of Google's Jaguar I-Pace, honestly, buckets of junk, which is what they are. Um, that said, they do also use a, the Zika Mix, which is actually quite a good electric car. But anyway, the prices are astronomical in comparison. But I should also point out that Waymo is reliant on heavy or HD maps, so high definition mapping, whereas Tesla doesn't use a different system, which I think is an advantage. Some people say it's a disadvantage. I think it's actually an advantage. Tesla has a number of advantages other than that, though, in the autonomous vehicle sector, one of which is the size of its fleet and the number of vehicles training full self-driving on real-world roads. Tesla's nearly 7 billion full self-driving miles allowed the company to roll out updates that make its vehicles behave like they're being driven by experienced drivers, even if they're operating on their own. And also to, well, Tesla benefits by getting the data back, but then Tesla car owners benefit from getting updates to their systems and their systems improving. So notable are Tesla's improvements to full self-driving that NVIDIA Director of Robotics, Jim Fan, after experiencing full self-driving version 14, said the system is the first AI that passes what he described as a physical Turing test. This is what he said, right? Despite knowing exactly how robot learning works, I still find it magical watching the steering wheel turn by itself. First, it feels surreal. Next, it becomes routine. Then, like the smartphone, taking it away actively hurts. This is how humanity gets rewired and glued to godlike technologies, he wrote in a post on X. In additionally, only about a month ago, the CEO of Xpeng, or Xiaopeng, flew to California and tested full self-driving version 14. Not the latest version, 0.2.2.1, but, you know, whatever version it was that was out at that time. He was similarly impressed as NVIDIA's CEO. This does tell me that um, Tesla is getting pretty damn close to being able to turn on full self-driving in customer cars. And when I say full self-driving, I'm talking full self-driving unsupervised. There is still some risk involved though. I don't think it's ever gonna be perfect because let's be honest, cars hit other cars. There's not much you can do about that. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.
Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery, or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below, and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description, and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.